Hey guys, it's Shred the Great here again with another War Machine Battle Report. I like playing War Machine, so you guys get cool reports. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, this is another game against Harkovich, this time with my Epic Striker list. Uh, I don't generally like to, to repeat uh, games re battle reports against uh, the same list slash opponent, but uh, this time I didn't really have a choice. I haven't really gotten many too many good games of War Machine in, um, not ones that would make uh, exciting battle reports anyway, so... Um, I do have a tournament coming up in a couple of weeks, a 35-point Steamroller 2012 tournament. Uh, I've never played in a tournament before, so this should be an interesting experience. So I'm getting a lot of practice games in on Vassal and my local game club and gaming store. Uh, I, I haven't gotten as many games in as I would have liked. Uh, the local meta isn't that big. I'm, I don't really know who's going to show up at the tournament. Um, a lot of times there's some people from out of town who show up at, at our local tournament, so... I don't really get a lot of practice games against some of the better players uh, that are going to be on, in the scene, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so if anyone is in the north of Boston, MA area, let me know. I'd love to get a practice game in, um, and I, I'd love to, uh, to play some new armies and some new opponents and get my game on. So... Like I said, playing Stryker versus Harkovich. I Stryker is my new my new favorite caster. Um, he, I just love casters who are fast, who can who can take on all comers. Uh, he's a great assassin caster. He's also got some awesome spells. Uh, Positive charge is great for my warjacks. Rebuke is great for enemy infantry. He's got his disruptor pistol to shut down enemy warjacks, and he's got velocity, so he can keep himself safe the whole time. So he's just a great all around caster. Um, and I'm playing with this list that I have so far. This is my favorite list so far with him. Basically, I, I have every little bit of, the, of Signar that I really like, and uh, a little bit of Striker's favorite in there as well to top it all off. So, so far, the list consists of a unit of Arcane Tempest Gun Mages with their Officer Unit Attachment. Uh, they have a Hunter Warjack marshaled to them. Um, I have a Journeyman Warcaster with a Hunter on him as well. I have... Um, a unit of Stormblade Infantry. I have a Hammersmith Warjack. That's great with positive charge on it because, you know, put a couple of focus on that and it can just beat back enemy Warjacks, smite them into things, and just cause havoc. Uh, the problem is it's slow and, and not very good at hitting things. Um, I've got Alain Runewood, uh, the little solo guy who can give uh, my guys plus two on charge attack rolls and Pathfinder and all that. And then I have Striker himself, of course, and a Journeyman Warcaster with a light with a uh, a uh, Hunter Warjack, and of course the ever-present Squire. Um, my opponent in this game has the same list he ran in the last game I played against uh, the Harkovich uh, list. So this is actually um, a Juggernaut, a Behemoth in Harkovich's battle group, a Destroyer marshaled to a unit of four um, battle mechanics, and then a unit of five Men of War Shock Troopers just to uh, sort of get in there and uh, jam things up. We are um, playing a scenario today, not just normal caster kill. Uh, we are playing a scenario from the Mark II rulebook. It's called No Man's Land. Uh, in this scenario, there's like an 8-inch band in the middle of the field. You can see it marked off by those little green tokens there. Um, and that, whoever can, at the end of the, the third player, the first player's third turn, not the third player, um, Whoever controls that and has either a unit or a warjack or a solo inside, wholly inside the the uh, zone, controls it and wins the game. Uh, no points or anything, just win or lose. So, other than that, obviously we can play the caster kill and uh, see who gets there first. So, um, we'll see how that goes. I've been having fun with these uh, these uh, the the Mark II just normal uh, prime scenarios, but. I'd like to expand into Steamroller as soon as I print the pack off. That's a lot of uh, scenarios to try to memorize, and I'm working my way up there. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the game. Here's the deployment, obviously. Um, I've advanced deployed my hunters up. One of the hunters is behind the, uh, behind the building there on the left-hand side. Uh, the Stormblades got their advanced move up behind that obstacle, and um, basically we're just posturing to, um, to try to move up to that scenario first. So, we'll see how it goes on turn one. So this is the end of round one. Uh, as you can see, and obviously what happens in round one, nothing too exciting happens. Both sides just basically move up. Um, sorry for the, the picture being whited out a little bit here. Uh, I've been using my, my camera phone to take most of these photos lately because I, I keep forgetting my camera places and my phone's just too easy. So um, I'm afraid some of the, the pictures get a little whited out. So I'm very, really sorry for the quality there. 
Uh, I, hopefully, I will remember my camera in the future and I'll get some better pictures out to you guys. Uh, but what we have going on here is that basically my, uh, my storm blades have run up on the uh, right flank there. My gun mages have advanced very cautiously. My opponent has a lot of bombards, and obviously Harkovich can allow the, uh, the behemoth to fire an enormous number of times. He can fire four times in his feet turn uh, with his bombards, so that's very scary. Um, so they're moving up very cautiously and spreading out a lot, uh, and they're just going to be able to try to push people out of the zone if they, uh, if they move in on that flank. The two hunters over there fired, I believe, at the juggernaut, and did a, a bunch of damage, um, but other than that, not a lot of exciting things happened. Obviously, the men of war shield walling over there, and then my hammersmith hiding behind the uh, the obstacle across from them. Uh, I believe my opponent went first this game, so uh, just keep that in mind. My opponent is uh, is going to be acting before me, but um, this is how it looks at the end of round one. Here's the bottom of round two. Um, I, again, a lot more posturing. Uh, my opponent and I like to play very cautiously. Uh, a lot of uh, War Machine players play very, very aggressively, and I don't. That play style really doesn't fit me too well. Uh, probably that's one of the reasons that I play Signar because I can I can still get some shots off as I'm uh, I'm trying to outmaneuver my opponent. Uh, but so we're both playing very cautiously. The Stormblades and the Hammersmith moving over on the side there. Uh, they are in firmly in the zone. Uh, the Hammersmith has Arcane Shield from the uh, the Journeyman Warcaster on it, so it's going to be very hard to deal with. Armor 21 on the 22 on the Hammersmith is, is very tough for those Bombards to take out, so he really needs to get one of his Heavy Warjacks in there and try to finish the job, but the Hammersmith is uh, is looking pretty solid so far. Um, uh, you know, Other than that, the uh, Stormblades have taken one casualty from Bombards, and the Behemoth fired at, one, at the, uh, the Hunter, I believe the... Hunter that was Jack Marshall to the um, the gun mages, and he he hit it and cranked the damage roll quite a bit, and uh, was able to take out its gun uh, very early on. So that was very unfortunate. Um, and but I can still boost the uh, either to hit or damage if it aims. It's rat nine, so it probably doesn't really need to boost a hit, but it can boost damage still, do a little bit of damage. Use the rune shot from the uh, from the um, the officer to try to do a little more damage. Um, other than that, not a heck of a lot happening. The uh, hunters kept uh, pecking away at the juggernaut. I think the um, the gun mages fired at it, and the first one that shot it knocked it down, which unfortunately didn't allow them to push it any further. But they fired at it and did one or two more points of damage with their guns. Um, so not too exciting. Um, again, a lot of posturing, taking a couple casualties from shooting, and uh, just some sporadic firing going on. Okay, so this picture is a little bit better. Um, this is the end of my opponent's round three. Um, so this is where my opponent could start to score the objective if he, uh, he had cleared my guys out of there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do that. I had a full unit, well, the, the whole Stormblade unit in there, as well as the Hammersmith. Who, he was sitting at Armor 22. He took a little bit of damage from some really good rolls from, um, from some Bombards, but he wasn't really looking too, too heavily damaged at all. So uh, my opponent could, could start to score in here um, on this turn, but he wasn't able to. Uh, so basically what, what's happened is that those, uh, those men of war had moved up to basically just plant themselves in the, firmly into the zone and, and stop me from basically ever, uh, ever taking it until I wiped them out, which is very tough because they can shield wall, be armor 21, just be really annoying. Um, well, I lost one, uh, storm blade to the, to one of the shield cannons off of the, uh, the shock troopers, but other than that, the storm blades are looking fine. I took some more damage on one of the hunters, I think. Think no, no. My opponent kept firing at the uh, at the hammersmith because it was looking uh, pretty scary up there, and um, I think Striker had moved up last turn and disrupted the behemoth, which stopped it from doing too much damage. But he was able to, to do a couple of points of damage onto the uh, the hammersmith. He's only defense eleven, so it's pretty easy for the uh, for the um, behemoth and the destroyer to hit him. Again, armor twenty two with arcane shield. He's not taking too much damage, but it's still annoying for them to be shooting at him over and over. Um, other than that, not not a lot going on. My opponent just cautiously advancing and, and basically just denying me from uh, taking the, the center of the board. Okay, so here is the bottom of round three. Um, it's a very blurry picture this time. I'm really sorry about that. Um, a lot of stuff happened this turn. My, um, oh, what I forgot to mention last turn was my opponent moved his uh, Juggernaut back to get repaired by the, um, by the battle mechanics. Uh, I was completely fine with this. Uh, as long as the... Um, the hunters could keep basically cycling his jacks back and doing enough damage for him to move them back and repair them. Uh, they were doing their job. This, you know, if they can take a, a juggernaut or the behemoth out for a turn or two while it moves back and gets repaired, then moves forward, uh, I am I am perfectly okay with that. 
Um, so what I've done here is I've tried to be a little more aggressive with the Hammersmith. I moved it up uh, right in front of those Man of Wars. They can easily charge it, but in order to stop that from happening, I moved up uh, Striker. I rebuked the, um, the Man of Wars so they weren't able to get in order. So that means they couldn't shield well, couldn't run, couldn't charge. They could only move up and make their initial attacks if they wanted to, which meant they weren't going to be able to get into melee range with the Hammersmith. I, I think actually they, they could have. Uh, but I don't think it would have it would have been very good for them. Um, but you know, basically, just neuters the whole unit, and that and that means that I'm going to be able to take care of them next turn with the Stormblades and the uh, and the Hammersmith going at it. Because they're not shield walled, I can beat on them and do a lot of damage. Um, Striker, while he was out there, also took a shot at Behemoth and disrupted him again with his Magnum, uh, and then used a Velocity to get back behind the wall. Um, the gun mages moved over a little bit to the left, continued to fire at Behemoth, and pushed him back a couple of inches. Other than that, didn't really do anything. The hunters continued to fire at Behemoth. I rolled pretty badly, didn't do too much damage, uh, and his, um, his battle mechanics were there anyway, so they could start repairing it. Um, other than that, uh, not, not a lot going on. Uh, so, going on to my opponent's turn four. So my opponent, um, reacting to my Hammersmith being all the way up there and... Uh, and uh, sort of threatening his Man of Wars, he, he moved up pretty aggressively. Um, he, instead of moving into melee range with the, uh, with the Hammersmith, his Man of Wars decided to move up and they all shield candidate. Um, they, they, unless they combined melee attacked, they, would, they were doing the same amount of damage with their shield cannon as they would have been with their uh, Annihilator Blades, their giant axes. Um, and this allowed them to also, allowed the, uh, the rest of the Jacks to also fire their Bombards at... Um, at the Hammersmith without any penalty to hit. Uh, my opponent also moved up the Juggernaut over on that side. He ran it over on that side to um, to be able to react to the Hammersmith. Um, the Behemoth actually ended up firing its bombards. It didn't have any focus, so it fired its bombards at the uh, at the um, gun mages. He had Fortune on the Behemoth, and, and which allowed him to reroll failed attack rolls and. Um, he actually rolled pretty well one of his attack rolls and ended up killing one of the uh, one of the gun mages, which was too bad. But um, other than that, he did a couple points of damage with the shield cannons. He rolled fire on the shield cannons, did, uh, did actually a couple points of damage um, to the hammersmith from the shield cannons as well as from the, um, the destroyer's bombard. So moving up, reacting to my, to my attack, and uh, basically just trying to do as much damage to that hammersmith as possible. Okay, so bottom of round four, I, uh, I counterattacked onto those Man of Wars. Uh, I had hoped that my opponent would move up and try to, try to deal with the, uh, the Hammersmith. Either way, the Hammersmith was going to be able to charge the, um, charge the Man of Wars and, and deal damage to them. Because they were rebuked, they couldn't take orders, so they couldn't have run away. They couldn't have got far enough away for the Hammersmith to, uh, to not be able to kill them. So I think I might have overcommitted a little bit onto the, uh, the Man of Wars. I put three focus and positive charge onto the Hammersmith. Um, I'd, what I'd hoped was that I would be able to hit a man of war, um, and then smite it onto the uh, onto the um, juggernaut and be able to do damage to that. Uh, what unfortunately <laughs> I I'd, I'd sort of forgotten a factor in the fact that the man of wars weren't in shield wall, um, and then with positive charge the uh, the hammersmith goes up to PS nineteen I believe, which is ridiculous. So my my hammersmith was just easily killing those Man of Wars left and right, so he ended up moving up, uh, just bas basically moving and, and killing three of the Men of Wars right in the middle and then sort of hanging out there in the middle of nowhere. My Stormblades got the plus two to attack rolls from uh, Runewood and they charged into the, um, to the uh, Man of Wars and killed the remaining two. Um, I, I actually ended up killing each, each Man of War with only one, um, only one Stormblade. I rolled really well on the damage rolls and I was able to do a lot of damage with them, so that was really good. Uh, move my squire up to contest the uh, the zone a little bit if he was able to wipe out those uh, those units that I'd moved up, so he wouldn't just win on that. Um, moved over with my gun mages, fired at the uh, the behemoth a little bit as well. Moved up with striker, disrupted the behemoth once more, and then um, and then just continued to fire with my hunters, doing a couple more points of damage. Okay, so here's top of five. Uh, sorry about this really blurry picture. Like I said, I was taking these on my camera phone. It's not the greatest camera of the phone world, but uh, you can sort of see what's going on over here. So he, what, what's happened is that my opponent's basically counterattacked onto my Hammersmith. Uh, his Behemoth is disrupted, doesn't have any focus on him, um, but he 
he is able... Uh, he's been upkeeping Escort on Harkovich, which means that he gives all of his jacks plus two speed. So um, the Behemoth is able to get over there with his uh, six inches of movement, get some get some punches in on the uh, Hammersmith, do a little damage. The Hammersmith's pretty well defended against the armor-piercing PS12 uh, fists, just because um, he does have armor twenty, he's armor nineteen base, which is halved to armor ten, and then plus three for the um, for Arcane Shield, which means that uh, he's um, He's swinging at dice minus one without being able to boost his attacks. He's only able to do a little bit of damage. Uh, but the Juggernaut has a bunch of um, of, of uh, focus on him. He's able to charge, or well, not charge. He's too close to charge. Um, but he he was able to move up and, and get some some boosted damage hits on uh, the Hammersmith. Do a little bit more damage, and then the um, the Destroyer went in there with his Jack Marshall, um, his Jack Marshall charge, and just finished it off. So the Hammersmith is down. Uh, what this does mean uh, is that all of his jacks are basically over on this side. Uh, I was hoping I was going to be able to push them away um, with some shots from the uh, from the gun mages and, and hopefully just win on scenario. Um, but what my opponent did here, which was which was a really bad mistake for him, was he moved Harkovich up next to the uh, next to the behemoth, and then he uh, he had escort up, so he was um, he was hoping to camp a couple a couple of focus and then um, and get the the armor bonus from escort. But what it did mean that was he was now in threat range of uh, of striker. So this is my turn. This is the going to be the last turn of the game. Uh, the last photo of the game, obviously. Um, as you, we, we I removed the uh, the hammersmith model. I don't have any uh, rec markers at, at this time, and the the hammersmith was actually kind of superfluous at the time. So um, I I did a couple of moves. I uh, poked my squire for a focus. I charged that storm blade onto the juggernaut to get it out of striker's way. Uh, moved back um, Runewood and gave Striker Pathfinding so he could uh, go over the obstacle and then um, and then go over the Wreck Marker in there without penalty. Uh, Striker positive charged for four inches just to get into threat range and to uh, re-maneuver himself a little bit so he wouldn't get um, a free strike from the Destroyer. A striker charged in, overcharged for, uh, I think I rolled really well in the overcharge, got something like 14 extra points of strength. Took, I think, 11 damage from the overcharge and then um, swung at Harkovich and just killed him in one shot. Boosting to hit, dice plus six or seven, uh, and then just killed him right there. So um, that does it. Pretty much when you get into charge range of Striker, there is very little that can save you. And especially Harkovich, who's a caster with not a great defense. Defense 16 gives me a little bit of a problem, but defense 15 on Harkovich is not enough for the... Um, for for him to to be able to dodge striker's attack so that happened obviously it was a it was a, a bit of a mistake by my opponent um he uh moving up that close was a was a big mistake he could have moved up a little uh moved up not as close but um he didn't really know that striker's threat range was so long so he ended up getting killed by the big sword that striker swings around so i hope you guys enjoy this battle report it was a great game great game to my opponent I greatly enjoy War Machine and hope to get some more battle reports to you guys in the future. One thing I do want to say is that my opponent and I are both very new to this game. And um, if anybody in the, out there in the YouTube nebula um, has any suggestions or, or any rules clarifications that, I, that need to be brought to my attention, I would, I would be very appreciative if you guys could just uh, give us some pointers um, and just, you know, just help us out a little bit. Uh, like I said, very new to the game. I've only been playing this game for about six months. Signar for even shorter than that. Again, I started as Crix, um, but I don't like Crix. It's kind of lame. And uh, Signar is way cooler. So, bam, done. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed again. Uh, and stay tuned for more awesome War Machine Battle reports and stuff like that. Peace out.